We're pleased to be joined by Representative Jim Banks. He's representative for Indiana's 3rd Congressional District, Republican candidate for U.S. Senate in Indiana this cycle in November. Representative Banks, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, good morning. Good to be with you. I mean, do do I have that sussed out uh, right in your mind in terms of what the the larger sort of ideology is in play here coming from this administration and radiating out to world government organizations like the U.N.? Uh, I think you're exactly right. But uh, what was uh, what's obvious to all of us is that this is it, this is completely intentional. Joe Biden opened the border with a stroke of a pen. He could he could close it and secure the border today right. again with a stroke of a pen. He refuses mm-hmm. to do that because this is intentional. This is a part of their agenda. Open borders, flood the country with future Democrat voters and uh, and, and build that uh, global uh global economy, the globalist view of the of the elite demo, elitist Democrats. So I, th- I think you've said it quite well. And so then then explain Senator Jim Lankford and this effort afoot among some Senate Republicans, including him, to uh, cobble together this deal with the White House and Senate Majority Leader Schumer, where Lankford is suggesting, as he was over the weekend, that this actually gets us to more border security, that the the goal here is no illegal migrant crossing into this country. Well, how can that be and why is it necessary if, as you say, it could be done with the stroke of a pen by the president? Yeah, I I can't speak to Senator Lankford's motivations. Obviously, this is very misguided. Uh, His his negotiation, some of the 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 establishment uh, Republican uh, negotiations with the White House and with the Democrats to continue the failed policies of this administration. I can't I can't explain it, but what I can tell you is that House Republicans are fully against it. And Speaker Mike Johnson has said this uh, bad deal coming out of the Senate, if it does pass out of the Senate, is dead on arrival in the House. Anything short of H.R. 2, which is our very strong uh, securing the border bill that we passed early in this term, anything short of that uh, will not pass out of the House uh, on on Republicans' watch. We have a two-seat Republican majority and we aren't unified about very much uh, in this majority, but we are unified on this. Anything short of H.R. 2 uh, will not pass out of the House. Well, now, what's, we had, oh, go on, Dan. What, what's, what's, what's the uh, the next step with Mayorkas? I mean, I'm sorry, beyond Mayorkas. So you moved to uh, impeach Mayorkas. What, 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 what is this a path to? It can't, it can't be ending with Mayorkas. In point of fact, other Andy McCarthy and others— I think have persuasively argued that um, that Joe Biden should be brought up uh, on articles of impeachment uh, as much for his border policy as for his uh, you know participation in this uh, corrupt uh, racket that his son was writing point on. Yeah, I I, I agree. This week, uh, Chairman Mark Green of the Homeland Security Committee has marked up the the uh, impeachment uh, articles against Secretary Mayorkas, and uh, that will, will quickly come to the floor. Again, two-seat Republican majority. There are a couple of squishy Republicans in our majority who we're not, sh- quite, we're not sure yet if they will vote to impeach Mayorkas. I hope they do, and I hope the voters in their districts let them know that, uh, that, 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 won't, that won't go well for them in the next election. Uh, but it's important that we do hold him accountable. But you're, you're, you're hitting on something that's far more important. Joe, at the end of the day, the buck stops with President Joe Biden, and he deserves to be impeached for uh, the, these, these open border policies that defy the rule of law in this country and that will forever change this country and not for the better. So aside from the, the, uh, the corruption with Hunter Biden and the Biden family cartel, uh, the open border policies of this administration, in, in my view, I agree with those who – you mentioned uh, deserve impeachment uh, just for that alone. Well, all right, let's talk about what happened. You know, the three U.S. troops killed by the drone attacks at Tower 22 on the border of Jordan and Syria. Biden says we will do something. What What is that something and what should that something be? Well, it, it, it's unclear with this administration. Uh, the, the, the unseriousness of this administration from the very beginning and wanting to wanting to pass another, uh, sign another uh, Iran nuclear deal to appease the biggest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. We, when we give money to Iran, we know that money is, is flowing to 
Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and others who are responsible for the attack on Americans like the three heroes who were killed over the weekend. But it's, it's unclear. This administration, uh, they, they should have swiftly reacted and held those accountable for killing our troops immediately accountable by, by, uh, by attacking them in response to, show the, to not just show the Houthis, Iran, uh, that we're serious, but to show the rest of the world that if you attack America and our troops, you will be held accountable for it. And instead, the, the weakness that emanates from this administration every single day will continue to attract this type of aggression, these types of attacks in a larger way. Joe, Joe Biden is the weakest commander in chief that we've ever had in American history, and our enemies know it. That's why China is inching toward taking over Taiwan. That's why Russia invaded Ukraine. Um, that's why North Korea is firing and testing uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles again. And it's why Iran is acting out on the world stage uh, in a large way, too. So we've got to, we've got to boot him from the White House and restore a strong commander in chief who, who, who is serious, that understands peace through strength, who will deter our enemies rather than attract them. And that, that's not going to happen for a year. But in the meantime, support for Congress put pressure on this administration to hold those accountable. Hell, there should be hell to pay for those who kill American troops. And right now it's unclear uh, that that's going to happen. He is Representative Jim Banks, a congressman for Indiana's third. He is also the Republican candidate for Senate in November in that state to replace uh, retiring Mike Braun, who is running for governor. If you're uh, checking your scorecards at home, <laughs> uh, Representative Banks, thanks so much for joining us again. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The stories you need to know to start your day. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560, The Answer. Terrorist attacks against Israel, escalating threats of a third world war, natural disasters, and civil unrest are causing people to wonder, are we living in the end times? In his new book, Are We Living in the End Times? Trusted pastor and best-selling author, Dr. Robert Jeffress provides solid biblical answers to seven key questions, including what role does Israel play in the end times? What five headlines will signal we are in the end times? And how can you prepare for the end?